Welcome. In this video, we're going to be discussing Paul's conversion to Christianity. We have a famous account of this in the book of Acts, but we also have another account written by Paul himself in his letter to the Galatians. In this video, we're going to be exploring this account. Let's first begin by talking about why Paul wrote his letter to the Galatians at all. So in about 48 AD, Paul goes on his very first missionary journey, and he comes to the region of Galatia and starts churches in the Gentile cities of Derbe, Lystra, and Iconium. And Paul converts the Galatians to his version of the gospel, which we're going to call the law-free gospel. He tells the Gentiles they should not be circumcised nor keep the Jewish dietary laws. After starting these churches, Paul then returns to Antioch. Now, down in Jerusalem, some Jewish Christians hear that Paul has created Gentile churches in Galatia and told them not to keep the law. These Jewish Christians from Jerusalem totally disagree with Paul's gospel. Therefore, they go to Galatia and convert all of these people to their version of the gospel, which we'll call the law-observant gospel, telling the Galatians they must be circumcised and keep the Jewish dietary laws. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why are the Galatians so quick in abandoning Paul's gospel? But let's imagine how persuasive these people from Jerusalem would have been. They would have said things like, we're from Jerusalem, where Jesus himself lived, where the apostles currently are. Listen to us. Don't be misled by Paul believing in his anti-Jewish gospel. Now, when Paul hears that the Galatians have forsaken his gospel, he is infuriated. He is beyond angry. So he writes a letter to the Galatians to express his disappointment and in the hopes of winning them back to his gospel. In summary, Paul says, Have you forgotten everything I have told you? Don't listen to those from Jerusalem. I did not receive my gospel from anyone in Jerusalem, but rather from Christ himself. Let's now read the opening chapters of Galatians. And as we read it, you have to imagine Paul yelling in frustration. Starting in verse 6, quote, I am astonished that you're so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we've proclaimed to you, let that one be accursed. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it. Now, this is undoubtedly a reference to Jerusalem. Paul is saying he didn't receive his gospel from anyone in Jerusalem, but rather, as he continues to say, quote, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ, end quote. So here, very clearly, Paul is saying, my gospel is from Christ himself, not Jerusalem. Paul now goes on to tell us about his conversion to Christianity. We continue to read in verse 13, quote, You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when the one who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles... I did not confer with any human, nor did I go up to Jerusalem, to those who were already apostles before me. But I went away at once into Arabia, and afterward I returned to Damascus. End quote. Okay, let's now slow down a bit and look at our map. He says he returned to Damascus, which must mean his conversion occurred at Damascus, which aligns nicely with what we read in Acts. After his conversion, he then went into Arabia for a time then returned back to Damascus. We can visualize this movement like so. Now, the age-old question is, what did Paul do in Arabia? The simple answer is, we have no idea. This is the only time in the Bible it is ever referenced to. But of course, that hasn't stopped people from writing entire books on the topic like Paul of Arabia, The Hidden Years of the Apostle to the Gentiles. I refuse to read such a book because it could only be mere speculation. Again, this is the only time it is ever referenced in the Bible. So how on earth do you fill a whole book on it? Nevertheless, the only speculation that I feel has some merit is that Paul mentions his time in Arabia to draw a parallel between Moses and himself. Later on in the book of Galatians, Paul will say that Mount Sinai, where Moses received the law, is located in Arabia. So perhaps by saying that he also was in Arabia, he wishes his audience to view him as a new Moses who gives a better law. To put it concisely, Paul, like Moses, went into Arabia where he received a new and better covenant. But again, that is very speculative. The only thing we can say definitely 
is that Paul mentions his trip to Arabia to highlight that he did not go immediately to Jerusalem. As we continue to read in Galatians, starting in verse 18, quote, Then after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem. So that means Paul spent three years in the Damascus and Arabia area before finally heading down to Jerusalem. So why is it that Paul delays his trip to Jerusalem? Surely after his conversion, he would want to immediately go meet the original apostles. But Paul doesn't, because Paul is so sure of his gospel that he does not need to immediately go down to Jerusalem to have it confirmed by the apostles. Such an action would indicate that Paul was subservient or reliant upon the apostles in Jerusalem for his gospel, which is not the case. Paul, just like them, received the gospel from Christ himself, granted through a vision. We continue to read in Galatians, Then after three years I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stayed with him fifteen days. So Paul visits with Peter for about two weeks. We continue to read in verse 19, But I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. So Paul doesn't see all the apostles, only Peter and James in a private meeting. Writing on this meeting, Bellazzoni writes the following, quote, Then after three years, Paul went to Jerusalem to visit Peter and stayed with him for two weeks. During that visit, Paul did not see any other apostles except Jesus' brother James. Paul is intent on making it clear to the Galatians that he is not now at the time he wrote the letter to the Galatians, nor has he ever been subject to the authority of Peter or James or any of the Jerusalem apostles. What transpired between Paul and Peter and between Paul and James during this initial visit to Jerusalem is not clear, but it is clear that Paul did not consider whatever was exchanged between them to be authoritative instruction from Jesus' apostles. End quote. Thus, in this private meeting, Paul simply confirmed his gospel with Peter and James. Paul did not come to Jerusalem to pledge his allegiance to these men. Paul did not view these men as his superiors or leaders in any way. This point is made abundantly clear in the very next chapter of Galatians, when Paul describes how he views the leadership of Peter and James, saying, quote, And from those who were supposed to be acknowledged leaders, what they actually were makes no difference to me. God shows no partialities. Those leaders contributed nothing to me. End quote. Now, let me be a little controversial here for a moment. Paul is almost like our very first Protestant. He has absolutely no time for anything like apostolic succession, nor the idea that Peter is the supreme leader of the church. For him, the message itself is paramount. Okay, we continue to read in verse 20, quote, In what I am writing to you, before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it said, the one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. End quote. So here we're told that after his private meeting with Peter and James, he's still unknown in Jerusalem and then travels up to the regions of Cilicia and Syria, undoubtedly to his home in Tarsus and then to the major church in Antioch. So if we were to summarize Paul's conversion as it is presented to us in the book of Galatians. We would say, after his conversion, Paul spent three years in Damascus and Arabia, after which he eventually goes down to Jerusalem, where he privately meets with only Peter and James, and then leaves Jerusalem inconspicuously, meaning he's still unknown in Jerusalem and did not leave for any public reasons. Now, all of these four points will be challenged by the account found in the book of Acts, where we also read of Paul's conversion. So in our next video, we'll be analyzing the account in Acts and comparing it with Galatians. If you've enjoyed this video today and learned something new, please consider becoming a patron. These videos only exist thanks to their support. Please also make sure you hit that like button, leave me a comment and subscribe. These things make a huge difference to the channel. Thank you for watching until the end. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.